Hello folks, I'm OdinSpack33, and welcome back to part two of The Messenger. Last time, we became the messenger. The Demon King desecrated our village, and the Western hero saved us and gave us the scroll and sent us on our journey. We went through the Autumn Hills, we beat the Leaf Monster, and we got introduced to the shopkeeper, who we're gonna see in one second as I go in there. But before I do that, I'm gonna get this little secret area up here because maybe this little time shard cache or time crystal, I don't know what you wanna call these, I'm gonna call them one or the other. I don't think that's gonna give us enough for an upgrade, but I figured I'd try and see how much that would give us. All right, need anything? Yeah, we can't afford anything. So, it's worth a shot. What do you wanna do? What do you wanna chat about? Current area. Forlorn Temple, huh? That's a sad one. How so? Haven't paid much attention during history lessons, have you? Venturer types rarely do, I get it. So short of it is, that that, that four-headed monster would have killed you earlier if that cooler than you hero hadn't intervened. That's the Demon King. He brought his armies to the human realm many centuries ago and destroyed their stronghold, forcing them to retreat into hiding. And he's been sitting on their throne ever since. You know, this is all that's left of the human legacy? For what it's worth, I'm sorry. No way, I'll go and take down that Demon King right now. You would be the first to try. Well, I can't just stand by while some evil monster gloats over my people's misery. You're still too weak to consider taking on even a second in command. I'm going. They can't even make it to the entrance without falling into the pit. Watch me. Oh, I will. Any stories to share? You have any stories to share? Of course, here's one for you. Once was a princess looking for a suitable husband. She sent an invitation to all neighboring princes, stating that the main trait she was looking for was sensitivity. Contenders came and went, attempting to pass her test. You'll be my guest tonight, the princess would explain. All I need you to do is sleep on that pile of mattresses. The next morning, she would ask them how their night was. I had the best sleep of my life, each would reply, confident they had proved they didn't fear the dark or they could be easy guests. They were all promptly dismissed. One day, an especially sensitive prince reported he couldn't sleep at all. I don't know what was up with that pile of mattresses he went on. It looked comfortable enough, but when I laid on it, it was like I had a fork stuck in my kidney. They got married the next day. Oh, everyone knows that story. There was a pee underneath the pile, so someone who's extremely sensitive wouldn't be able to sleep. Yes, but have you ever heard of what happened after? For the first few weeks, everything was amazing. The prince would always complain. Just the guy she asked for. When the soup wasn't too hot, it was the cutlery that was too cold. When the music wasn't too loud, the paintings were uninspired. And when the clothes weren't itchy, the poems were predictable. So one day, just like that, it dawned on the princess that she was in a toxic relationship. Not only was her husband a drag, she had voluntarily picked him for that exact reason. It dawned on her just like that, how this whole love story was nothing more than two people whose dysfunctions matched like puzzle pieces. Incredibly humbled by regal standards, she realized that she was the only constant in her problems, delved into personal growth, then got a divorce. She lived happily ever after. The end. What a what a story. And just like that, we're out of here, because guess what? We got plenty more stories to go. As we're gonna go take on the Demon King, you know, part two, no problem, right? Let's go across this bridge, but we can't make it, and we fall into the catacombs. Game was kind of setting us up for that. You know, it wasn't gonna be that easy. Come on. Come on, it wasn't gonna be that easy. Oh, you scared me. I thought you were an undead. What kind of creature are you? Never seen a Phobokin? Phobokin. Uh, we are a tribe of builders. Technically very hard working, but every one of us is cursed by a unique fear which we are named after. What's your name, Necro? Necro, so you fear the dead and somehow ended up in the catacombs? Ironic, isn't it? I fell while trying to repair the temple ruins above, and was instantly paralyzed by all this morbidity. Anyway, thanks for setting me out of it. I really should get back to work. Alright, and they're gone. By the way, I'm sure I mentioned this already. Soundtrack? Awesome. Here's the catacombs. Very, uh, you know, undead-inspired cave. We've got bats, we've got skeletons, you know, all the standard fare. It's all here. But, you know, we got these guys here, too. So don't worry, we're gonna get some more enemies besides the unique messenger enemies. I mean, I guess these are all unique messenger enemies, right? And we're gonna get this little secret area up here by using some cloud stepping, because, like I said, cloud stepping you can just kind of get everything with. It's just so good. That's that's this whole gameplay mechanic. And look at that, we found another time shard cache. Time cache? What are we gonna call this? I don't know. I'm trying to think. The question is, you know, am I gonna leave it up to the audience to determine, or how many of these am I gonna record in advance and just kind of decide upon myself? I guess I can just say a bunch of names and then eventually one will stick. That's kind of what ends up happening when I do this. That's how Goldman came into existence, and if you know what that one is, wow, you've been watching my videos for a while, so. 
But anyway, oh no, the doors are trapped. Who's this? Who's this uh, mysterious wizard figure? Well, they left a bunch of undead for us to fight, so let's uh, do that. Thankfully, they're really easy to s dispatch of, so no big deal. <laughs> really, no big deal. Oh, do I not have the swimming upgrade? I guess not. Well, we will soon enough. I really thought we had enough for it by now. I, I guess I'm spoiling that, right? But there is a swimming upgrade and we're gonna get it right now. I guess we didn't have enough. But yeah, now we can uh, dash underwater. So that would have helped there. I just didn't have enough time shards. Oops. All right, looks like our next upgrade's at 200. So let's, let's chat about this area. We just did it, let's do it again. Hey, you made it to the catacombs. Okay, anything I should know? Not really, it's pretty standard stuff. Skeletons and bats own evil wizards, too. You bet, a necromancer even took over. Spooky, cliched. It's just to get this area out of the way. There are more original ones lined up. Demon King. Hey, how'd that epic raid on the Demon King go? Did you manage to save the world and restore your people's honor? It's not fair, the bridge was in shambles. Well, we wouldn't have much of an adventure if you faced off against a big villain right away, now would we? What do you do here? I study magic. Can you teach me? Not really. Why not? Because you're not ready. Ready for what? For magic. Come on, you just asked. No, but I meant... Believe me, learning magic is a lot harder than following a conversation. Any stories? Do you have any stories to share? Of course, here's one for you. There once was a poor old lady who had nothing in life save for a small shack and a pear tree. Her name was Madame Misery. Her whole family ate misery, and sometimes there wasn't even enough misery to go around. One day she was visited by a starving beggar who asked whether she had any food to spare. She didn't, but her heart was as big as her situation was unfortunate. So she served the beggar a few clumps out of the tasteless broth she had simmering that invited him to help himself to a few pears. The beggar removed his cloak, revealing himself as a deity. He was disguised as a beggar to see whether there was any kindness left in the world. Touched by Madame Misery's generosity, he offered to grant her a wish. Let me guess, she didn't want anything and it's immoral about living frugally? No, no, this is good, let me continue. She mentioned a lot of people were stealing her fruits, which jeopardized her chance to eat every day. Her wish was simple, an enchantment on her pear tree so that it would trap anyone who stole from it until she decided to free them. The divine wizard granted her wish and took his, took his leave. Time went by and she scolded many thieves but soon realized that most of them were starving children. She decided to take it upon herself to feed and educate them and soon became the pillar of a thriving new generation. Ever happy and generous, Madame Misery got so old that her face looked like an elephant's knee. And then one day, death came for her. Death, following the protocol, inquired about her last request. I'd like to eat one last pear from my tree, she said. Would you be kind enough to grab one for me? Death climbed in the tree to grab a pear, getting trapped in the process. The old lady decided to never let death out of her out of the trap, and since then there has been misery in the world. The end. Right? What's the moral? Being selfless justifies being selfish later? Generosity begets misery? I don't know, it's just a fairy tale for kids. I just thought the idea of death trapped in a pear tree was interesting. It certainly is interesting, for sure. Uh, one thing I haven't... I mean, I, I briefly talked about this last time, and I, I just want to bring it up again. That yes, this game is obviously connected to Sea of Stars. Um, and there's already been plenty of references <laughs> if you've played that game. Also, here's our new underwater ability. We can dash as we go into the secret area to get this power seal over here. But yeah, I'm not going to bring any of them up during this playthrough, but when we get to Sea of Stars, the, quite the opposite, where I'll be dropping all the messenger lore, as I know it, <laughs> uh, into that playthrough. And I'm very excited for that, but you know, it's going to be a while before we get there. We still got a whole of this game to get through. And I mean, how long is this game? Well, it's shorter than that one. <laughs> oh, also, that hurts. We just got hit by those... Uh, blades there. Uh, spikes and other blade-like things do three damage to your health. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but we only have six. We started with five. We got one health upgrade. So yeah, um, they hurt. So avoid touching those. You know, if you can get hit by an enemy instead. Um, or, you know, not at all. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's your best plan of attack, obviously. But yeah, spikes hurt. Uh, who would have who thought? Uh, they really hurt in this game. <laughs> Not instant death, thankfully. That is good. Uh, but, you know, they, they do hurt. I like that you can even cloud step, like, even off these, like, destructible blocks. Like, it's it's kind of crazy, like, everything that you can really cloud step off of. It's, it's really anything. Anything that your sword connects with, 
you can now do a double jump. It's such a cool mechanic. I love it. All right, we're gonna quickly get through this so we don't get slammed by those. If we didn't have the uh, underwater dash, we wouldn't be able to get through that. Oh, I don't know how I didn't get hit there. There's a potion down there. I don't need it, though. I'm somehow at full health. So, yeah, like I said, I'm not a speedrunner for this game, but I'm just going to keep going because this game is just so satisfying when you just get a run going and you just you just get moving. Just what a satisfying game. And here we got these wizard guys who shoot these uh, three um, projectiles at us. And they warp around. They're... Pretty easy to deal with now, but they are not a fun enemy. And this will definitely not be the last time we see them. They are uh, <laughs> a pretty frustrating enemy, but they're pretty cool though. I'll admit, they're, they're you know. They got, they got the spread shot. They got the classic Contra spread shot. And we had to take him out to get through this door. I guess we get through, no, that doesn't work. Okay, why don't we just waste two key points just on nothing there. Alright, let's get out of this room. I'm, all, I'm already regretting being in here. Right, that that did not work whatsoever. That would have been a good way to, to hit that guy. I would have had to wait for the projectiles to go away, probably, to get the shuriken off. Alright, and let's uh, <laughs> run away from this Indiana Jones style trap here. For some reason, I'm thinking of Star Tropics. That's, isn't that weird that that's where my mind went first? Because I'm a lot more familiar with Star Tropics and Indiana Jones, but there's lots in that game that's inspired from that. You know, let's just talk about Star Tropics, too. Um, it, it's obviously pretty clear this game is inspired from Ninja Gaiden, but I never grew up playing that one. Um, and from everything I've seen of Ninja Gaiden, I don't think I would like it nearly as much as this. They, they definitely, uh, you know, they took everything probably about that game and they're like, okay, let's bring it into the modern era. And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. If you're a big Ninja Gaiden fan out there, I apologize. I'm not trying to hate on it. By the way, there's some great use of cloud stepping right there to quickly get through that section. Could I have gotten all those other candles? Sure, but it wouldn't have looked as cool. Look at this. We can also just really use cloud stepping here to get through this without even getting hit. That was really close. I definitely almost did. Yeah, sure, we missed some time shards along the way, but that's okay. We'll try to get as many as we can while looking cool. Alright, and you know you know what this little double candle and mid-door here means? It means we got another boss. But not after we grab this, which now enemies are going to drop, uh, randomly drop globes to give us health back. There's also a key point one for that too, but uh, I decided against that. Health a little more important, so. Level boss, I believe you have reached the Necromancer's doorstep. Any advice? Very little is known about this villain. Okay, so no advice. Dodging anything that looks like evil magic would be a good start. Wow, great help. I also recommend looking at my inventory for any useful upgrades. I really appreciate all the support. Look, the Necromancer's a newcomer. All we know for now is he plans on taking over the world of this undead army. All we know? Sorry, I meant I. All I know. I'm totally on my own here. Like, it's more the shopkeeper that meets the eye. Alright, it's boss time. Looks like we're fighting the, the Necromancer. And with this army of undead, everyone will soon fear the mighty Ruxton. Ahem. What now? We have a visitor. I don't have time for visitors. Well, he seems to have time for you. Oh great, just when you think you get to play with your evil lab. Do I have to remind you who's in charge here? Now say something threatening and try not to embarrass us like you did last time. Oh, I've been practicing. Watch this. Ahem, who dares enter my lair? Uh-oh, is that the messenger? Looks like it. What do we do? Steal a scroll, of course. Good plan. Unguard, face the mighty might of Ruxton the Great. All right, this song, pretty good. I won't lie. This is a really cool boss theme. What, what, what am I talking about? The music in this game's great. Of course it's great. <laughs> I don't really need to explain this to you, right? So we got a few attacks here to deal with, and we're gonna do our best to avoid everything. I don't know how we can destroy this now because we got the the strike of the ninja. So we just time that and make sure that we don't get hit there. Could also use the shurikens too. 
Yeah, there might be a way to get up here with cloud stepping. There, there probably is. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure there is, but it's, it's just e oh, wow, I just got nailed with that. So I probably could get up there with very clever cloud stepping, but it would. I'm just not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that pro. Okay. I mean, his boss is already blinking a lot here. We gotta be doing some pretty good damage. Oh, there we go. We have the, the shuriken up. There's another one. All right, this has got it. This is gotta be the last little rounds here. Oh yeah, one more hit. There we go. The mighty Ruxton has fallen. Ruxton also. I yield. Wait, I don't. It's over. This th evil thing is clearly not working out for us. No matter how many skulls we slap onto ourselves. <laughs> Any suggestions then? I'm listening. I don't know, just something else. Like what? Introspection would be a good start. What has all this brought us, really? Ridiculous, I'm sticking to evil. Oh yeah, and how are you gonna do, how are you gonna accomplish anything if I'm not carrying you? Well, I could. That's, yeah, that's a good point, actually. It's settled then. Carry on, messenger. We promise not to cause the world any more harm. Or any harm. I guess they didn't do any harm at all. And they say the same thing, so. I'm just showing you that there's no new dialogue. But there we go, there's the catacombs beaten. Stage 2 beaten, and on to Bamboo Creek next time on The Messenger. I've been OwnSpac33. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you then. So until then, take care, and goodbye.